loves and welcome back to another video. Now today I'm going to be talking about spiritual psychosis as that's been trending quite a lot and I've seen quite a few videos of people talking about it, sharing their experiences and kind of like blaming the new age spiritual practices for making them go psychotic or having a psychotic breakdown. Um, ending up in a mental asylum, you know, that sort of thing, basically going insane. Um, and yes, this can 100% happen. So we're going to be elaborating what it actually is and why spiritual tools and practices and just a spiritual path in general. Also, um, other sort of paths like being a Wiccan or witch, um, even religious paths as well, like extreme religion can lead to psychotic breakdowns. Um, spiritual psychosis so time and time again and this is such a deep topic but loads of people like I've mentioned in other videos in the past time and time again people will normally go to the you know typical new age you know um, practices you know they'll find loads of videos on YouTube they'll start meditating you know doing loads of yoga doing all these things that like open up their third eye, crystals, doing tarot, you know, basically doing a lot of divination type things um, without really understanding what genuine enlightenment actually is, without genuinely understanding what spirituality genuinely is. And this is why time and time and time again, people go down the psychosis route. And this is why so many of them end up in, you know, a mental home or even unaliving themselves or um, making their lives so much worse because they open themselves up to, you know, dark demonic energy or then they run to the church out of desperation. You know, I've done older videos um, exposing a new age, why parts of it can be satanic. So go check that out. Um, but to elaborate on why it can actually cause psychosis is because most people come to spirituality for the wrong reasons. Most people come to spirituality from a space of ego, not to shed it, because the most important aspect of spirituality is having an open heart. It's the opposite of your ego. Yes, certain aspects of our ego are needed, but a lot of the time people have very dark egos stemming from desire, lust, greed, etc. Low vibrations. So it's so important to address why you actually are on the spiritual path in the first place. A lot of people will generally go to spirituality purely because of manifestation. That most people are led to the new age because of the law of attraction. And yes, the law of attraction is real, but that is literally one tiny, tiny universal law. Most people don't do the actual work, learning all the other very important universal laws. The law of karma, the law of reaping what you sow, doing shadow work. Shadow work is the number one most important key when it comes to spirituality. And if you are getting involved in spiritual tools and practices without doing shadow work, 100% you'll end up psychotic. 100% you'll have spiritual psychosis. Definitely. Because most people don't want to do the hard work. Most people think that as soon as they buy a few crystals, you know, they want a quick fix, like I've said in the past. So, and this is not hating on anyone, by the way, okay? I've made many mistakes myself, but I was, I was very fortunate enough to have a very wise teacher warn me about these things, actually too. So in my past, and because I come from a past where I was exposed to, you know, dark entities, I grew up as a medium, I grew up very clairvoyant and having the gift of, you know, seeing things and hearing things in the spirit world, I knew the dangers. So I've always known that there 100% is darkness, there 100% is darkness as well as as light. You know, there's angelic high vibrational beings, but on the flip side, there is dark and demonic beings as well. It's very similar to the film Constantine, okay? You know, without all the, you know, very strict uh, religious dogma, etc. It's similar to that, but more in a sense of energy. So this is why, you know, a few years ago, I warned people heavily to not believe certain New Age teachers that tell you that demons and dark things um, don't exist, that evil doesn't exist. 
That is one of the most dangerous things you could actually accept and believe in when you are doing spiritual practices. If you believe that truth is subjective, you're going to lead a very dark life. You're going to end up <laughs> suffering brutally. You're going to end up living a very low vibrational lifestyle. And it doesn't matter how much yoga, meditation, crystals, and all that shit that you do. It doesn't matter how much you save yourself. If you don't control your ego, heal your inner trauma, heal your inner childhood wounds, and actually act from a sense of morality, control that ego, accept that there is universal laws, accept that you're not some God that can spiritually bypass them, then you'll be safe. But so many satanic, luciferian, new age teachers and spiritualists, and also religious people as well. So it comes from both sides and even atheists, but was, you know, to do the spiritual side of it, so many of them will teach you that morality doesn't matter, the sins aren't real. You can do whatever the hell you want <laughs> and um, somehow live a, a peaceful life. No, that will end up in utter chaos. If you literally live your life like that and you don't practice spiritual hygiene, you will live a life of chaos. You will not shed karma. You'll keep attracting negativity. You'll keep attracting bad luck. You'll keep attracting bad karma, essentially. So... Because the thing is, too many people don't want to do hard work nowadays. Unfortunately, we live in a very, you know, snowflake type society, as we know, right? And we see why truth is not subjective. Because one, look at maths. You know, maths proves that truth is not subjective. Five past five is always going to be ten. It's never going to be eleven. It's never going to be nine. This is why insane, woke, extremist people were actually trying to ban maths <laughs> in schools. That's how insane people are now getting because they are just going around believing that they can be and do whatever the hell they want. That is literally hell because the more you subtract yourself away from truth the more you subtract yourself away from god from love because really you know and if you don't want to use the word god use the word source but at the end of the day if you are removing yourself from source removing yourself from the garden of eden essentially that's what it means in the bible by committing sin when really the sins are literally guidelines they're not rules they're universal guidelines Yes, they've been somewhat corrupted, but essentially most of them are spot on. Most of them are true. But because religion and Christianity has been corrupted, unfortunately, people turn away from it. People think, oh, no, it's just all dark and dogmatic and homophobic and this and that. You know, of course, they've corrupted certain things. But in general, the seven sins or the Ten Commandments, you know, they basically are universal guidelines to keep your vibration high. A lot of them are spot on. But because a lot of people act from their ego, they act from a very immature and, you know, foolish state of mind, they don't want to accept that there's rules <laughs> on this earth plane. So they fuck around and then they find out. <laughs> so, you know, many wise gurus and wise occultists, genuine ones, know this. You know, even Dion Fortune, who is a very, very well-known, you know, occultist, um, who wrote many books, she wrote a whole book just on basically how to not go insane when you're looking into and doing occultic practices. A whole book on not to go insane. Because unfortunately people, you know, when things get to their heads, if power gets to their head, if they develop a God complex, that is a very dangerous road to go on because then your ego will completely take over. You will listen to demons because demonic entities are not stupid. They feed off low vibrations. They know how to trick you and not acting from your heart, but you're acting from your ego. You're acting from pleasure and desires and addictions and your trauma and all these things, these lower vibrational things. You're not being led by God. And this is why so many people run from the new age because they realize their so-called spirit guides that they thought they were talking to were actually demonic. They were actually demons. And then they get scared. And then their whole life turns to shit. And then <laughs> they run to the church. And I don't blame them. But 
if they were protected, if they practice spiritual hygiene whilst doing spiritual practices, it's a very unlikely chance that would have happened. So to give you certain guidelines, to give you like, you know, <laughs> a straightforward answer of like how to best avoid these certain things, you know, number one, you should not be drinking alcohol if you're doing yoga, meditation, any sort of rituals, ceremonies, any sort of spiritual practices, you should not be drinking alcohol at all, at all. It is atrocious that there's some people that call themselves shamans, healers, oracles, and they drink alcohol. Like that literally means body eating spirits. Whenever you're drinking alcohol, you're opening yourself up to demonic low vibrational entities. You are. This is why so many people literally black out when they get drunk and then something else takes over their body. You know, alcohol comes from the word alcohol, which means, you know, flesh eating ghosts. They're called spirits for a reason. So go check out my video, a very long video I've done on why I gave up alcohol years ago. So you can understand better. But this is so important that so many people override. And I may be a bit aggressive and feisty in this video because I've been saying the same shit for years, okay? Years. Since I started my channel, I've been saying this again and again and again. And I see so many people like just not getting it. They don't take it seriously enough. They're not taking spiritual hygiene seriously enough. So again, this isn't shitting on anyone who struggles with an alcohol addiction or who accepts that, okay, it's not good for me. I need to change. You know, I'm not um, being hard on those sort of people who actually want to give it up. They want to better themselves. You know, I know life is hard and people have coping mechanisms and they struggle you know many of my clients smoke drink and they know it's bad they have addictions that they're working on and i helping you know and i help them through that but you know i used to drink i used to smoke i know how hard it is to give up certain you know vices but what annoys me is when you have certain spiritual people who bypass things especially if they um, a teaching or portraying themselves as some wise guru when in the background they're doing very dark things or worse they're teaching other people that evil doesn't exist you can just do whatever the hell you want um no <laughs> this is what leads people to unalive themselves this is what leads people into having mental breakdowns so and just people themselves being foolish people themselves like i've met so many people like this where, you know, they, they'll replace one thing with another thing. So a lot of people that come to the spiritual community, um, they'll replace one ego with a spiritual ego. So unfortunately, the spiritual community does attract a lot of narcissists because it's another way to justify certain things. It's another way to justify them running away from responsibilities because people who seek spirituality... They're like, oh, I'm just a free spirit. I want to be free. When in reality, a lot of them are very selfish. A lot of them don't want to be responsible. A lot of them are running away from things that are actually going to make them grow. Spirituality is not about comfort. It's about growth. It's about healing. It's about being of service, not receiving just loads of pleasure and abundance. It's about balance. And I'm not saying you can't enjoy yourself. Of course you can. But your main priority shouldn't be that. Your main priority should really be to be of service, to show love, to be the strongest version of yourself, to do what's right. And unfortunately, a lot of people are not, you know, doing what's right. They're doing what they want to serve their own addictions, their own shadow selves. Okay. So their own selfish desires and pleasures, whether it be drugs, alcohol, sex, partying, materialism. You know, like I was saying earlier, another number one thing that people fuck up when they get into the spiritual new age space is they're purely only doing it for money. They're purely only doing it to manifest wealth and they're obsessed with it. So money becomes God's. Money becomes their number one priority in life which is <laughs> always going to end up bad. Now, this isn't demonizing money. Like I've said before, money is good. Money is important, okay? But it's a tool. It's, it's not God's. 
So money can be used for good things, but if you make it your number one priority for the wrong reasons, basically to have this deluded idea that, oh, as soon as you have loads of money, you're going to be happy um, because of selfish reasons, that's going to lead to psychosis. That's going to lead you down a very slippery road because if you don't get money, you'll forever be depressed. You'll never be grateful for what you have. You'll never receive other forms of wealth and abundance, like good health you won't appreciate. You won't appreciate a loving relationship. You won't appreciate other things that are given to you. Your wounded ego will constantly be, you know, wanting money, 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 money or cars, or handbags, or whatever the case, designer clothes. And again, it's like, yes, you can have materialistic things, but don't make them things gods, because they're not. When you die, you don't take your money. This is why your soul, your energy, is your number one most valuable thing. More valuable than cars, rings, whatever it is. You know, your physical body will rot, it will die. So remember the basics. Too many times this matrix brainwashes people to be stuck in their root chakra, which is all to do with sex, money, status, fame, you know, negative validation, very shallow. And this is the dominant energy that people are in when they're also doing meditation, yoga, ritual ceremonies. <laughs> so you're opening yourself up to really dark entities, really dark spirits. So the key things here is to have, you know, physical, spiritual hygiene. That is what prevents spiritual psychosis. So like I said, no alcohol, no hard drugs, but even, you know, psychedelics and those sort of drugs, even marijuana, you know, go check out my two videos that I've done on that. Because if you're opening yourself up constantly or relying heavily on those sort of drugs just to cope through life, that will send you psychotic. That will send you into spiritual psychosis. That damages your mental health. It physically damages the brain if you overdo it. You know, people forget, even with marijuana, you're not supposed to have it every single day. It causes brain damage. Brain scans prove this. So it is a hard truth that people need to accept. And marijuana nowadays, the THC levels are way too high. It's not natural. They are genetically modified hybrids. So the plants you're smoking, they're not natural. And then people mix heavy metals and all these other chemicals and shit within it. And you're inhaling that. And you really think that's not going to mess you up mentally? Of course it is. I myself experienced this. I've seen it with other people in my life. It destroys you. I've had clients say this to me as well, how much better they got as soon as they quit taking, you know, um, smoking drugs. Like, it is such an important thing to address. You, It's so unsafe. And even <laughs> a master Reiki um, practitioner that I met years ago warned me about this. 15 years ago, I met this guy because he helped me for a hard time. Um, and he himself, who was the best Reiki master I've ever, ever met, he basically warned me, do not smoke marijuana. For him, he said, at all. Because he says, it opens your aura to dark beings, to dark entities. And that's all he said. <laughs> and I knew he was right because he told my dad off when he gave him a healing. Because um, he knew he'd smoked marijuana without him telling him. And then he told him off. But <laughs> basically, he was right. And I saw it and then because I went years without doing it. And then as soon as I done it consistently for three months, I was stoned. It messed me up. And then all hell broke loose in my life. All hell. And when I say hell, I mean hell. It opened a doorway to fairy dark beings that wrecked my life. So it is not to be taken lightly. You must be wise and mature when it comes to substance abuse. You cannot be abusing any form of substances if you are on the spiritual path. Even if you're not doing spiritual practices, it will still mess you up. But if you're doing that and spiritual practices, that's an absolute recipe for absolute chaos. Really dangerous. And when I say dangerous, I mean it. So another thing is people who overly rely on even like mushrooms 
Um, and I don't mean microdosing, you know, that in my opinion is okay. But if you are basically, because studies have been, you know, shown that it can help, you know, microdosing. But if you are doing like, again, relying on heavy doses of it, um, no, 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 no. And again, I know this from my own experience and other people's experiences. You've got to be so careful. But I've done a whole video on this. So go watch out my psychedelics exposed video. Then you'll see what I mean there. Um, but even with people who do like too much ayahuasca, you're using it as a coping mechanism. These things don't heal you. They can show you things. It can give you guidance, but it can't heal you because I've seen it time and time again. People will be on a high literally after doing the ayahuasca retreat or whatever. Sometimes, sometimes they don't and it goes really dark and bad, but as soon as they go back to reality, as soon as they go back to their dominant, you know, normal energy, they're back to square one because it's not enough. It's like the same thing as constantly going to a shaman, getting healed and relying on a shaman to give you healing. But then you go back to living a low vibrational lifestyle of smoking, drinking, sleeping around. And then you get all tainted again. You taint your aura. Then you, oh, I feel like shit. I feel like I'm getting, you know, possessed. And then you have to go see the exorcist or the healer or the Reiki master again and again and again. This is what I was like 15 years ago with that Reiki, uh, Reiki master. So I, I made these mistakes. So I'm not just speaking from like, oh, what you should do. I've lived it. <laughs> I've lived it. You know, I'm now 34 years old. I've lived this shit. So trust me, I've been on this journey for a long time. I made all the mistakes. I've seen other people do really bad, dark things and been through dark things myself. So trust me. <laughs> um, and I've met really loving, incredible superhuman people who luckily I was fortunate enough for them to help and guide me too. So speaking of that, I remember also being told by someone called Mr. Wu, I've mentioned him in a few of my videos before. Basically, he's the most incredible spiritual guy that I've possibly ever met in my life. Literally superhuman. He used to be a breatharian, um, a master at Kung Fu. He's in his 60s. You know, he's like um, a little tiny, you know, Chinese man, very wise. But, um, you know, he taught me heavily a lot about spiritual hygiene. When I met him about... 10 years ago, I'd say, I was a stupid, naive, little new age, fluffy person. So even though I acknowledged a darkness, so that I did know, that I've always known because I've seen demons with my own eyes. A lot of new age um, gurus and healers will say, demons and curses aren't real, they are. Um, <laughs> so that I never agreed with because it's like, no, I've seen them. I know that's bullshit. But I was still very much um, drawn in to the kind of, I had a bit of a spiritual ego. So I was very sucked in and, you know, naive. I was just unwise with certain things like marijuana, psychedelics. I believed that, oh, they could heal you from all your childhood trauma and, you know, one trip. Um, I was very heavily, uh, you know, reliant on coping mechanisms such as um, crystals and, you know, all of it, all the typical new age shit I was really heavily involved with. But luckily, I met this guy and I was doing Kung Fu lessons with him, with my family. And he would just channel and lecture me for like three hours straight. <laughs> Sometimes things I didn't want to hear. So this is what I mean. Like, don't look at things you know a lot of people will get butt hurt and their ego dented when people lecture them when people who are more wise tell them things that they don't want to hear they instantly get you know oh offended or they see it as an attack when really it's just basic truth when you actually think about it and when you learn and when you grow and when you learn spiritual hygiene, when you learn how everything has an energy imprint, you reap what you sow, etc. You learn universal laws of karma, especially learning about karma. You accept it because you realize, you know, you, you gain this maturity, this wisdom. And it's only because I was able to listen to him and with respect and an open heart instead of take offense, it taught me so much. It made me who I am today. Instead of being against him, turning against him and being like, 
what does he know you know what i mean <laughs> so even though sometimes he would tell me things i didn't want to hear always from a you know place of compassion he was right he was so right and um, he taught me what genuine spirituality is and again this isn't shitting on yoga or meditation or anything like that i mean uh mr Wu, he would meditate for like four hours straight this man was incredible and you know, he would astral project. He said, I die every day. <laughs> um, and when I first met him, I didn't really understand half of what he was saying. Now I do. And he'd be like, oh, I'm, you know, I meditate 24 seven. Even with that, I was like, what? What do you mean you meditate 24 seven? But what he meant was he's present 24 seven. He lives in the moment 24 seven. And he was so humble. He was the most powerful, physically strong man I've ever seen in my life and felt like he was like incredible. It was like literally like Bruce Lee, like no joke. The things he could do. But he was so humble. He never showed off. And like he, he his ego was non-existent <laughs> pretty much. But he was stern when he had to be. So again, he was soft but strong. He was balanced, yin, yang, like I've said in my other videos. He was a prime, prime example of a divine masculine. So he taught me so much and he taught me the importance of spiritual hygiene. And one of the most important things he said, so to get back on like the rules, the, I won't say rules because people don't like that word, guidelines of how to keep yourself sane in a high vibration, not even a high, just a neutral vibration, so you don't fall into spiritual psychosis or fuck yourself up or open negative demonic doorways, which is much easier to do nowadays, by the way, because the veil is thinner than it used to be. And it doesn't help with all the other things that are going on. If you know what I'm talking about, you know. Something that begins with a C. Go check out my Patreon to find out all those <laughs> things. Basically, he would say, you should not meditate for longer than 15 minutes. And this is going to piss a lot of people off, but you should not meditate for longer than 15 minutes if you eat meat. And when he first told me that, I mean, obviously, I've, I've been vegan for nearly 10 years now. Um, and he was also vegan, by the way, for like 30 years or something crazy. So he'd been vegan for a long time. Even the way I met him, it was extremely serendipitous. So... It was like, yeah, so he completely changed his whole life, basically. But he said that you should not be meditating. So basically doing deep meditation, any form of meditation, you know, and this includes yoga as well, because that's like a more physical form of meditating. You're still opening your aura when you're doing that. Um, this is why Christians hate on yoga, because it's like, it's not just stretching. To be fair, they are right. <laughs> I'm not saying it's demonic, but except Kundalini yoga, and I'll make a video on that. I don't trust that style but um you are opening yourself up and it is deity worship <clears throat> again i'm not saying it's bad but it's um it is a spiritual practice you are making yourself in union with certain entities when you're doing it so <clears throat> it's not just stretching so this is why loads of genuine yogis are vegetarian or vegan they have a very clean lifestyle they don't eat meat, they don't drink alcohol. This is why, you know, genuine Hindu uh, gurus and yogis, um, you know, they have a clean lifestyle. A lot of them are vegetarian and they don't drink, smoke, sleep around. You know what I mean? They live a very holy life. They live a very, I don't even want to say holy. It's just a clean lifestyle. It's a high vibrational lifestyle because everything taints your energy. That's like negative. So everything has vibration to it. Everything has a consequence. You know, this is like the law of karma, the law of like consequences, okay? Everything affects you. Everything, everything has an effect on your body, on your energy fields, no matter how small you may think. So this is why he said it's so important when you're opening your aura, when you're doing these things, you can't do it for longer than 15 minutes if you eat meat. And because if you do, you're going to open yourself, open yourself up to dark entities. So this is why even with my one to one clients, um, you know, if I advise them to do certain, you know, meditation practices and I know they're not vegan or vegetarian, 
Um, I never send them meditations that are longer than 15 minutes. So I always keep it at that mark. So those are like the physical guidelines. So obviously, you know, no alcohol, no heavy meat, all those sort of things, you know, even sleeping around. Because remember, having sex with someone, you're exchanging energy. So if you're promiscuous, it's not just STIs that you can catch. It'll be... <laughs> sexual transmitted demons because you don't know what trauma that person has you don't know what they've done you don't know what entities or astral parasites they have on them especially if they are drug users substance abusers um heavy meat eaters very traumatized like they can have a lot of things attached to them so and if you're sleeping with them especially more than once that will transfer into you that transfers into your aura this is why even certain monks and nuns and gurus will be celibate because it, it does clean your aura. It keeps your energy clean because it's very risky. And I've learned this the hard way in my past. Trust me. It's so risky when you are like sexually intimate with someone with dark energy. If you're sexually intimate with someone with dark energy, they can like massively mess you up. They can make you physically sick. They can make you mentally ill, especially if you are in a long term relationship with someone and um, they will feed off you. You know, if you're with a narcissistic energy vampire type person, they will make you physically sick. They will like destroy you. They will destroy your life because every time you're being intimate with them, it's like you're giving them energy. And this is normally why they have a, a high sex drive as well, by the way, because it's like they want to keep feeding off you. They'll have a sexual parasite that keeps wanting to feed off that energy. So the next thing is porn addiction. If you're watching porn, you should not be meditating. You should not be opening your aura. You should not be doing yoga. You should not be doing anything like that if you are a porn user. Because porn, and again, I've made many videos on this exposing how dark the porn industry is. That is, again, the number one gateway to opening yourself up to like a demonic um, oppression, possession, <laughs> tainting your energy. You know, sex is very powerful. It should be sacred. So again, it's not completely demonizing it because sex can be really healing if done with the right person, if done with love, okay? If you love that person, really, you shouldn't be having sex with someone you're not in love with. And I've had to learn this the hard way. This is why so many people are fucked up. This is why so many relationships are dark. It's because everyone is just giving away their sexual energy to everyone, completely becoming cluttered. And they're not doing it from a space of love. They're literally just using each other's bodies to masturbate in because of porn addiction, especially men. You know, men, porn has destroyed men massively, okay? So... Don't be of a man that has a porn addiction because he will have parasites on him, entities on him. Because remember, things transfer through screens. People forget this. So this is why, you know, you have to be very careful what you watch, what you listen to. This is why you can get cursed <laughs> listening to a certain thing or watching a certain thing. You know, it goes in your subconscious brain. It opens things up. So if you're watching very dark porn that is just lust or even worse, like abuse or God knows what, you know, low vibrational things or people that have actually been trafficked. Because remember, 80 percent of uh, porn people, porn actors that you see are trafficked. It's against their will. They're acting, but they're trafficked. So it's not regulated. You know, the top sites even involve child essay porn. It's that bad. So you could be literally watching something that's actually real or real grape, okay? You know what I mean when I say grape. You could be watching it, you know, real and you wouldn't even know. So do you know how dark that energy is? <laughs> and it basically is keeping you trapped in that low, low vibration of like a, being like an animal. You're literally just trapped in your root and that's it. You're not ascending. Because remember, Christ consciousness means you have to ascend. Enlightenment means you have to rise your energy up. And you can't do that if you're drinking, taking drugs, watching porn, sleeping around. It's just not going to happen. You cannot 
spiritual bypass, universal laws. Okay, there's 12. I'll do a whole separate video on them. But there is very <laughs> deep rooted laws, okay, that you cannot bypass. And you cannot bypass spiritual hygiene. It's impossible. It's like having a plant, okay? So imagine you're a plant and you're watering it every day. So that's your crystals, that's your yoga, that's your meditation, that's all this shit. That's your manifestation, law of attraction. But then every day you're giving it a shot of whiskey. Every day you're smacking it. You're cutting it. Eventually it's going to die. <laughs> so eventually it's going to get diseased and ill and wilt. So, or you give it lights and then you're keeping it in the cupboards in darkness. But you keep watering it and watering it. But then at the same time, you're putting it with poison and literally shutting out the light. It will die. You're basically like a plant, but with way more complicated emotions. <laughs> so that's a kind of simple way to understand it. But, you know, it's it takes you killing your ego, doing shadow work, being mature, being mature essentially. Because a lot of people come, you know, to the spiritual path from a place of immaturity or from a place of trauma. You know, self care is absolutely key. You know, grounded practices is like the most basic form of spirituality. The most basic form of spirituality is being grounded looking after your body, looking after your mind, relationships. Relationships and how you treat other people is the most spiritual thing you could do. Because relationships are the number one thing that is being attacked right now. Relationships between humans, especially when it comes to your heart, because again, they always attack the heart. This is why your heart, your heart chakra is the key. The most powerful healing thing is love the most destructive thing is stress heartache betrayal trauma the opposite of love basically you know stress can kill you and i've learned this the hard way and again you know you see people who are like into spirituality or witchcraft or whatever um doing all these things but then they're in toxic relationships and they wonder why they're getting attacked it's like come on you have to be discerning, listen to your gut, because your gut doesn't lie. But unfortunately, you can't listen to your gut. You won't have good intuition if you're abusing substances and alcohol and doing, you know, low vibrational things. If you don't have good spiritual hygiene, your intuition is cut off. You don't have a connection to source. You have a connection to demons, <laughs> quite frankly. You have a connection to your inner demons as well you'll be reacting from a wounded trauma because you you won't be listening to gods you won't be re listening uh, you won't be able to get messages from your higher self because you'll be chasing pleasure or lust or reacting from a place of trauma you won't heal your triggers you know most people run when shit gets hard. Most people run away from their inner demons. The most people run away from their shadows and listen to their inner demons because they're the ones that give them comfort. It's hard and uncomfortable to grow. It's hard to grow. And too many people have this deluded fucking idea that spirituality is all love and lie and it's all fluffy and it's all about just manifesting money and love and fame it's not it's about healing your inner demons it's about activating your heart chakra it's about activating christ consciousness which is love that is the truth. That is what God is, is love. It's the vibration and frequency and energy of love. That is Christ consciousness. And if you're not connected to that, you're Luciferian consciousness. That's the lower ones. You're stuck at the roots in a negative inverted way. So that is hell. That is Lucifer. You know, and this is a whole other deeper concept, but go watch my spiritual warfare video to understand, uh, you know, Luciferian and Christ consciousness energy better. 
because most again most spiritual people don't understand or accept that we are living in spiritual warfare so because we're living in spiritual warfare you have to be responsible you have to be strong you have to be cunning you have to outsmart the demons you have to rise above them you can't destroy them but you can rise above them you know like um Denise says and Dr. Strange is spot on. You know, you can't destroy them, but you can definitely rise above them. And this is what spiritual hygiene does. This is what raising your frequency does. You know, the most spiritual thing is activating your heart and having boundaries, having discernment. Those things are vital. So self-care, spiritual hygiene, acting from a place of love, not your ego, and having boundaries, discernment. Because time and time again, another bullshit thing that New Agers say is, oh, you shouldn't judge people. There's a big difference be between judging and discernment. A lot of them say that so you don't judge them, so you don't question them. A lot of fake gurus, etc. say they demonise judgment because they don't want you questioning what they say. It's really that simple. It's clever manipulation and gaslighting. Because remember, like I said in, you know, my fake guru video, they're very much culty. You know, a lot of these people know about cult brainwashing. And I'll be talking about this in my next video. Because it's so important to address. Because there's certain techniques and things that they do that are really good at brainwashing you. So, and there, you see them in uh, many spiritual uh, practices to break you down and then to fucking get in your head. It's basically like MK Ultra. okay? It's another form, but disguised as something loving and spiritual. You've got to be so careful where you put your energy, especially when you're on the New Age path, especially when you're on the spiritual path. Because there are many snakes there are many soul traps. There are many wolves in sheep's clothing. And if you don't listen to your gut, if you don't have a clear connection to God, to source, to your spirit guides, to angels, you will get destroyed. Trust me, it happened to me. I'm talking from experience and it almost killed me. It almost killed me. And I'm still healing from it. So <laughs> trust me when I say you must, must have a clear, clear source. And you can't falter. And if you do, clean yourself off. Just have a salt bath. <laughs> you know, do something. Okay? But it's not a quick fix. It takes time to regenerate. Just like if you break your leg, you can't run on it the next day. It takes time. It takes time for that bone to heal, for your skin to get strong again, etc. Okay? So give yourself time. So I know this video has come across as quite harsh, quite aggressive, but because it's important, because I speak from passion, from love, tough love. Sometimes people need a bit of tough fucking love. That's what I got from my mum, from Mr. Wu, from, um, you know, even Christian, it was the Reiki master who helped me. He gave me tough love. And because I listened, it works. I was able to grow. I was able to stop being foolish. I was able to mature, to wise up. But unfortunately, people don't want to listen. They don't want to hear. They sabotage their own lives brutally. Brutally, because they refuse to grow because they act from a place of fear and not love. They act from a place of paranoia, you know, because spiritual psychosis can even cause extreme paranoia and it can drive you insane. So people who are like overly obsessed with spirituality as well, that see everything as a sign, you know, like I see uh, repeating numbers every single day, but I don't see what they mean anymore. It's just like, meh, okay. It's just a part of life. You know, it's like people focus too much on the small things that really don't mean much. And then they ignore the big things that really are important, like what I've mentioned and covered. They focus on all these small little things. Oh, a feather. Oh, 444. Oh, look at that number plate, 777. 
and then they completely ignore the their addiction or <laughs> you know whatever dark shit they're doing the cult they're in so it's like come on you have to be stern and strict and disciplined and it's hard to be that way but discipline is what equals happiness and whenever I've been so undisciplined because I've had many addictions in my past you know I used to smoke I used to drink abuse certain substances I was bulimic promiscuous you know what I mean I was in a dark place many toxic relationships I had no discipline I didn't work out I completely wrecked and sabotaged my body my mind my spirit you know I've been there done that but as soon as I got disciplined and stopped listening to my ego and started to open my heart and became more compassionate in conjunction with spiritual hygiene that's when my life changed that's when I started feeling angelic spirits around me and no longer demons and yes, you can still get attacked by certain things, but it's normally when you open the door. Because I done the hard work, I got to a really high, high vibration, and then I stupidly opened a door through sub substance abuse, okay? So smoking marijuana for three months straight. And then after that, my whole life went to shit. <laughs> so uh, for years, by the way, it almost killed me because that opened up a very dark doorway to something um so don't take it lightly and many other people have said this to me as well you know i've had clients go through similar things it's so important that people are aware of this so they avoid having mental breakdowns um so to keep it you know to wrap it up basically you cannot <laughs> uh, avoid mental breakdowns if you are messing with spiritual practices with how whilst having a low vibration whilst smoking drinking being promiscuous watching porn you know all of that shit um having an unhealthy diet uh or just refusing to be a good person not being moral or just literally refusing to address your own inner demons to heal your inner trauma you know remember you are supremely powerful beings you know, every single person is supremely powerful, but heaven and hell can be states of consciousness. Um, and this doesn't mean that you turn to toxic positivity. So like I've exposed before in other videos, I'm not saying that, but spiritual hygiene is a must. There are just some things you don't do. There are some things you just cannot do without karmic consequences. And this doesn't mean that good people can't suffer. Of course you can. Um, and normally it's because of your trauma, your inner childhood wounds that haven't been healed, they haven't been addressed, or you're in a toxic relationship and then they're feeding off you. There's many reasons why. Um, so I'm not saying that, but, you know, if you want one-to-one -one help to try and figure out, you know, if you are one of those people, then get in contact with me and I'll be able to help you. Um, cause that's what I normally do. I figure out, you know, what things normally are that can be potentially causing certain things, you know, catalysts. Um, basically, I specialize in shadow work. I specialize in people's um, ego, you know, shadow ego, <laughs> I like to call it. So because that's really what your trauma manifests as is a shadow ego. And most people are not aware of their shadow ego. So they're in that little demon that you've literally manifested and conjures within your own brain, which then is a frequency match to other entities and demonic things, um, literally controls you. Because it controls, you know, your subconscious controls 95% of your brain. So if you're not self-aware and you have this raging shadow ego, it will destroy you. Trust me, it will destroy you. So shadow work is essential, absolutely essential. That's the only thing that will change your life. No amount of affirmations and spiritual bypassing will do that. So you must, must accept your flaws and face those inner demons, which most people refuse to do. Why? Because of their ego. <laughs> so it's like a vicious circle. People are trapped in their ego and they don't want to look in the mirror because it scares them. So, but if you're brave enough to do it, it will change your fucking life for the better. It won't be easy, but it will be fucking rewarding. It will be worth it in the end because your shadow ego just runs old programs subconsciously 
And that's what you're listening to. So you're not listening to your intuition. You're not listening to your spirit guides, to God's to source, to your higher self, you're listening to your shadow ego. So sometimes it's not always, oh, like an actual entity. It can be sometimes, but sometimes it's literally just your own shadow ego, which is like an inner demon, to be fair, because it's like accumulation of like real dark childhood traumas um, that are very deep rooted and you're allowing them to control you. Genuine spirituality is self-awareness. It's awareness of yourself which means it's awareness of your ego, of your shadow, of your traumas. But if you're narcissistic, if you are in a toxic ego, you lack self-awareness. So then you lack accountability and then you blame everything. You blame the world, you blame this, you blame him, you blame her for your problems or your issues. Okay, it keeps you trapped. This is why so many wise spiritual gurus, genuine ones, and philosophers say that you must know thyself. Because only when you know thyself, which involves shadow work and self-awareness, void of ego, that's when you can make changes. That's when you can start acting different. That's when you can start to sink to a consciousness of love. Because really, love is the cure. As cringy as it sounds, it is, because it's a frequency. This is what the Holy Spirit is. When people say, oh, I felt the Holy Spirit, that was their Christ consciousness being opened, being activated. You know, Christ consciousness is the frequency of love. That's what that is. So they're associating it again with an external thing, but really it's their heart opening for the first time <laughs> in their life sometimes. It's the first time they felt genuine euphoric love real love because most people confuse love with obsession or ownership or lust that is not love again that comes from the ego but so many people unfortunately block this energy because their ego gets in the way ego shuts off love you cannot have love when ego is involved shadow ego okay so that will always be blocking it and too many people wear blinkers and they don't want to hear it. They don't want to see it. And they don't want to look at their own demons in the mirror. So then they go around living very low vibrational lives, even within the spiritual community. And then it gets too much. And then if you're living this way, so for example, if you're on the spiritual path, doing all your manifestation rituals, doing all this, doing all that, doing your meditations, affirmations, blah, blah, blah. And you're not seeing results. You're not getting the life you want. You're getting worse. And, um, you know, this is when you go into psychosis or if you do too much drugs and, you know, all the other things I've mentioned. Um, it can turn into a living hell, which many ex-New Agers say. They say that their life got so much worse when they got um, involved in New Age practices. But then you'll see the other New Agers gaslighting them all the time. Oh, it's just because, you know, you didn't do this or you didn't do that. Um, and this happens a lot. You know, there's so much victim blaming. There's so much gaslighting. Um, when unfortunately, you know, dark entities do actually attack people who accidentally open themselves up or get attacked during like a psychedelic experience or whatever. Um, and then people are like, oh, it's just a bad trip. It's like, it's not always just a bad trip, mate. <laughs> um, trust me. So it can call, it can be very dangerous. You know, people forget, like I said in my psychedelics video, people have actually died doing um, ayahuasca and certain things, okay? There's many fake shamans, many fake shamans that literally just want your money. They're not guiding you, you know, through the astral properly. It's such a sacred thing. And really, it shouldn't be done in massive groups either. Because they only do this because of money. Because, they, oh, they can make loads of money the more people that are involved in an ayahuasca, you know, ceremony. But you don't know these people. You don't know what demons these strangers are carrying. So they can jump out of one person and go into you because you're open. Your aura is open because you're high off your tits. <laughs> you know, it's spiritually dangerous and this can happen. So again, you're playing with fire when you're doing really deep group uh, healing sessions like that. Really, the most safe way to do it is in a very small trusted group 
of people you know or one-to-one -one. really that's the best way the best way to have spiritual healing is one-to-one one-to-one -one with a shaman um which most won't do because of money but um it's very risky when you're going to these things and this is what messes up a lot of people even when you do like very big group certain yoga things uh, certain practices not all of them and meditations as well group meditations certain ones it depends what the energy of the practitioner has what environment you're in what people you're around it's you're playing with fire whenever you're opening your aura in a group setting with a guru or a teacher or whatever that you don't know it's um it's very risky especially if that teacher is not clean energy wise so if that spiritual teacher guru uh, yogi whatever they are um especially tantric teachers my god if they don't have good spiritual hygiene mm, <laughs> they could make your life so much worse and i've had so many people tell me this again go watch my reiki exposed video read through the comments and you'll see so many people got worse off after going to a reiki practitioner because that reiki practitioner unknowingly put so much negativity and dark energy into that person because their filter wasn't clean you know if you're a spiritual healer you must have more clean energy even more so than the average joe because you're your filter so if you're doing reiki you have to have like really clear energy and genuine shamans make people do this even in the book of solomon right so even Solomon with his rituals, he would make people like fast, have no sex and all this for like 90 days prior. Okay. So, and most shamans don't let you like eat meat or certain things or have sex for like two weeks before taking a psychedelic. Okay. So it's just common sense. It's like being street smart, but spiritually, it's being spiritually street smart. So if you're doing a group ayahuasca, shaman, whatever, mushroom thing, okay, in a group setting, do you know if every person has fasted for two weeks with no meat? Do you know if that old guy from Australia didn't shag some woman the night before? No. <laughs> so certain people could be very unclean. They can have very unclean energy and that is not a good environment for you to be opening your energy around. Trust me, I've had this too, okay? When I've gone to certain practices or uh, yoga, whatever, you know, healing things and um, I felt worse afterwards because I picked up dark energy from other people because my aura was open. So, you know, you need to protect yourself. You can't just be like floozy. It's basically like sleeping around, doing things like that. It's the equivalent of going around shagging loads of strangers with no condom on. I know some people do that and they're disgusting, but it's like that, but worse. Because <laughs> it's not just, oh, a sexual STI disease you can manifest and catch. It could actually be a demon. Okay, it could be their trauma, their negative energy, their depression their lack of finances um <laughs> you shouldn't be sleeping with someone you wouldn't want to be is a good rule of thumb like i've said in other videos like this you know it is what it is as many people say but um it's really like you know it's not about living like a saint or a nun like extreme you know religious people do or even being like a buddhist you know this is why buddhists completely detach from society <laughs> I, I i get why but again, it's like, you don't have to live that extreme. You don't have to completely detach from your ego. You don't have to completely have no expression. You can be artistic. You can be sensual, erotic, but you have to do things in the right way. You have to do things with spiritual hygiene. You have to be always acting from a place of love. That is the number one thing above everything is acting from a spiritual, a place of love is like the most powerful thing because if you have a lot of darkness hatreds um malicious intent <laughs> bad intentions jealousy 
you know, giving evil eye to everyone, um, not being supportive, being very selfish, self-serving. That's the opposite of love. I know that was quite a long, <laughs> I know this was quite a long sort of intense video, but um, it really does upset me when I see people suffering in this way, when it can be quite easily avoided, to be honest. It's really common sense when you think about it, but unfortunately, at the same time, because so there's so much misinformation, there's so much heavy brainwashing at the minute um, from all aspects, all um, medias, it's really hard for people to discern truth when really it's more simple than we think. It's really just connecting to your heart, being loving, being moral, but also having discernment and boundaries. Boundaries are so important to protect yourself because unfortunately there are very demonic people that exist on earth, okay? You've got your earth angels and your empaths and your people with, you know, open hearts. And then you've got the, the opposite. You know, we live in a plane of duality. This is even why people are seeing, you know, actual demons. There's a thing called demon face syndrome, which I'm going to do a video on. Um, like I said, the veil is thinning. People are literally, it was on the news, okay? But they're trying to disguise it as a mental condition, literally calling it demon face syndrome, right? So people are now actually seeing people's faces shape shift into like goblins, into like demonic things um, with their own eyes in broad daylight. And they're, you know, they're not schizophrenic. They've already debunked it saying it's not schizophrenia because that's the only thing they experience. Like that film, they live, but without the glasses. And remember, I literally said this years ago. I said that the veil was going to be thinning and you're going to be seeing these things. I literally said this. I warned about this. But of course, the mainstream are trying to gaslight you and play it out like, oh, it's just a mental health condition. What, seeing people shapeshift into demons. <laughs> so, you know, don't believe the gaslighting. If you do see someone like that, don't react, just walk away. You know, it's don't draw attention to yourself, just remove yourself. But this is what I mean. Literally, there are people that are demons in disguise or they have a lot of demonic energy within them. Um, and this are not, you know, this is normally the dark triad type personalities. So these are normally the psychopaths, of course, sociopaths and narcissists. You know, one of those three, they're normally very much energy vampires, narcissists, you know, demons in disguise. So you must have discernment and you must be extremely careful with allowing these people into your life. Because if you do, they could destroy you. They destroy you, usually by completely breaking your heart because they know that's what emits the most negative energy. That's what completely destroys you physically, mentally, and spiritually. It breaks your spirit when you have a broken heart. So, you know, but this is a whole other video and I'll be doing a video on this soon. But um, bear that in mind. So this is why you can't just open your arms to everyone. You, you know, keep a small circle. And this goes the same with, you know, spiritual groups. This is why people get sucked into cults and covens that are dark, um, you know, that are normally led by these types of people that are literally led by demonic people. Uh, you know, this is deep. This is very deep. But this is why you must accept that, you know, we do live in a world like this and you've got to be very protective because if you don't accept this, you're playing with fire. And then this is when you fall into spiritual psychosis, fall into a mental asylum, unalive yourself and or you run to the church and you still suffer. So it's because um, then you shut down all your gifts. You know, your gifts are not demonic. Your gifts are beautiful. If you're a natural born psychic, you're beautiful. If you're clairvoyant, that is not demonic. That is a gift from God. So don't let Christians try to, again, gaslight you into thinking it's all oh, demonic. It's not. You know, there's so much <laughs> to cover with this, but I'll leave it there. This has been a long video. Um, so I'll leave it there, my loves. If you want one-to-one -one help, I do have a 10% sale on my one-to-one -one Oracle card reading services, which is basically me just giving you spiritual guidance with whatever problems you have. Um, so click down below if you want to book a session with me. I also have a Patreon with exclusive um, content that I don't post on YouTube. Um, these are my more sort of like uncensored, dark, you know, conspiracy type <laughs> stuff. 
um, that would otherwise get me in trouble, even banned once um, videos that I did try posting on here. So that's all on my Patreon. But um, until next time, my loves, please like, subscribe. Don't forget to click the notification bell to be reminded of my uploads. And until next time, I'm sending you so much love, so much light, ahimsa.